Hey guys, it's Dorian. Today I'm going to show you a quick video on why I like GNOME and how you can customize it. And yes, I have a new intro. Uh, decided to play with a little bit of 3D animation and a bit of 8-bit uh, chiptune music, so let me know if you like it it's too long. I don't know. I just wanted something a little more fun. Anyways, so this is GNOME, and you'll also hear pronounced GNOME. Uh, won't really get into that. I don't care how you say it. The developers call it GNOME, but I don't know if it's a dialect thing. I don't know if they call the little creatures in their gardens garden GNOMES, uh, or if they just wanted it to sound different, but I've been using GNOME since uh, 99 or 2000, before YouTube, so I never heard anybody pronounce it. So um, yeah, if they wanted it pronounced GNOME, they should have spelled it different. I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Call it what you want. Um, so this is GNOME. Um, I like it because it's mature. It's uh, stable. Um, a few versions a while back were not so great, but uh, it had its problems. But now with the newest GNOME shell, it's uh, nice and stable again. Um, so this is what you're gonna get, and you're getting started, you know, like you do with most operating systems. And it's very simple. You've got your data on top, you've got your little um, system tray here with your volume and you know battery status. Uh, this is where you can shut down, restart, lock the screen. Uh, you have your control panel which actually has quite a bit. Um, and while I'm looking at this, um, this is another reason why um, this is one of my favorite full desktop environments. I'll always build my own but you know you have to add all the little pieces to make things work you know like printing bluetooth and whatnot and you, you don't really have your own control panel like this you can make one um but this is nice if you want something you know that generally works and works well um it's a little more intensive on your computer it uses about a gig of RAM just logging in so um, like making our own desktops the one that I have uses between 200 and 250 megabytes and so of course when it comes to you know having more options and tunable things it's you're gonna add more that more to install um, this uses uh, Ubuntu 16.04 it's using the core Ubuntu 16.04 um, when we installed our basic um, bare bones system you can install GNOME uh, just by let me show you quickly uh, just do sudo app install and it is Ubuntu Ubuntu GNOME oh, desktop you install that. I'm not going to do it because I've already installed that, and it's going to install GNOME Desktop Complete with everything and all the applications that come with it. Um, you can also just install. I think it's just GNOME Shell, right? GNOME Shell, which will install only the desktop. It's not going to install all the extra stuff. Uh, one annoyance I have is when your screen is locked, whether you lock it or you walk away, you end up with this, and it's almost touch screen. Um, it's almost designed for touch screen because you have to click and slide it up, and then once you're at your login, enter your password. Um, and also, let me just log out really quick. I'll go. 
Here is also where if you have other desktops installed, like you still have your open box, your custom one, or you know, um, Unity. Actually, no, do not install Unity with GNOME together. They mess each other up. Your icons are all messed up. Like it, it just doesn't look the same in either of them. So if you're going to try GNOME, try GNOME. If you want to try Unity, try Unity. But don't install them both on the same system. Um, and speaking of Unity, uh, Ubuntu Canonical announced that they're dropping Unity and they're going to be using GNOME. Going back to GNOME, I should say. So anyways, so as you saw earlier, I click on the activities in the top corner here. And this is where you get your favorites bar. So you can have your file manager, uh, your text editor, and all that stuff on your favorites. And when you're in the activities menu here, here's where you access your other workspaces. So then you could take your, if you're working on multiple things, uh, let's open up Genie as well. So you can drag that into another workspace. And it's just like separate desktops, right? And it'll automatically create and remove them as you as you use them or take them away. Okay, and then the rest of your applications are in here. Show applications. And all here. I've added a couple. Uh, this isn't a fresh install, but this is what it will look like. Um, and you can just type to search for whatever you want as well. Now I don't like that you have to click here, click here. You can have your keyboard shortcuts and whatever, but just like with the dock, uh, I like to have everything all in one place, always visible. So when you first install uh, GNOME, you're going to have Firefox. I installed Chrome later on, but first thing that you're going to do when you want to customize it and make it your own is you're going to search for GNOME extensions. And it's going to take you to this page, GNOME Shell Extensions. And in here, you can add and remove um, extensions for GNOME. Uh, the first time that you go to this page, you're going to have a bluish purplish box up here asking you to click install to install a, a plugin for Firefox. This allows you to go into one of these extensions and then you can flick the switch on and if you haven't installed it before you'll get a little pop-up asking you do you want to install you say yes. So see this one removable drive menu it adds a little removable drive icon up here whenever you have something plugged into your USB or something mounted like I have a, uh, a virtual drive mounted right now. And once you've installed that and if you install Chrome you can fire up Chrome and you'll notice there's the little foot over here and you just click on it it takes you right to the page and the extension once you've installed it in Firefox it works in Chrome as well. Um, so then you can browse through and search for ways to customize your system. In GNOME, if you go to Show All Applications and you can go All Utilities and Tweak Tool, or just in the search bar type Tweak. Now what this does is it lets you customize how it looks. It's like a power tool and you have extensions. Once you've installed your extensions from that website, it's going to add them into here. So one that I install first always is dash to dock. I've already installed it, that's why it's here. And turn it on, and now my my dash, my old activities favorites bar is now like a dock, and it's always there, always visible, which is so much better. And it's very much like Unity, I guess, but it's also how I set up my desktops because I just enjoy always having them there because you can also use them as as if it was a a taskbar, right? So in the dash to dock settings, you can go through here and you you know you can decide if you want it to be full, how it looks, do you want it to be purple or you know 
all your settings are all in here. Um, other things I do, I turn on the battery icon here, I auto hide that. If your battery's full or your laptop's plugged in, it'll go away. If you're running on battery, it will show it. Uh, what else? Drop down terminal, I turn that on. So if you hit the tilt key, you get your terminal pop up. And you can just tap it back and forth. It's like um, what's called Gwake. There's an application called Gwake that you can get for any Linux application that does the same thing, but this integrates it into the GNOME shell. Uh, what else do I use? I use Open Weather. I turn that on, and then you get your little um, weather forecast up here. There you go. It's 29 degrees and sunny. Yes, it's really hot today. Um, places status indicator. It adds this, so you have shortcuts to your downloads and whatnot. Uh, user themes. Turn that on because it lets you change the GNOME theme. I don't, but if you're going to, this has to be on. Um, what else? Oh, right. I have Dropbox installed. So in GNOME, the legacy system trays down in the bottom left here, you can see them making it show up and disappear. It's an arrow that you click and it'll show all your your legacy system tray icons. But if you turn on Top Icons Plus extension, it moves it up to the top here. And then you can make that go away. So that's pretty cool. There's, there's a whole bunch. You can play with them all you want. Um, and then other things like on the top bar, you can have it show the date. You can have it show seconds, show week numbers in your calendar. Um, set your startup application. So this is what I mean by a more complete um, desktop environment as opposed to what we were building. Uh, another thing that I do is in the Windows, this is in the Tweaks tool still, uh, under Windows I set the middle click to be minimized. That way you can just, you know, middle click and make it go away. Or you can have it show your minimize and maximize buttons, but I prefer not. And yeah, other than that, um, once you have some themes installed, uh, as always, I like the paper theme. You know, it even colorizes certain um, certain applications differently. With fun taskbars uh, and the icons. Yes, I do paper. You know, makes them a little more colorful, a little more fun. Uh, cursors, yeah. Uh, shell theme. For that, user themes have to be installed. And if you install or uninstall extensions, the annoying part is there's no refresh. You have to close it, open it again. And uh, I won't let me know, but really I don't care. Oh, I, I don't think I have any installed, do I? Yes, I do. Um, I'm not going to waste much time here. I'm just, oh, I didn't turn it on. So turn on your user themes. Probably won't let me do it now. There you go, yes. So your shell theme, you can just open it directly, but I have them installed. I have a whole bunch here, and you, know, you can make it look different. Here, I'll just change my background so you can see it a little more. And let's do this. So yeah, it adds a bit of transparency. There's the paper one. There's clear. I just like it black. Um, and that's about it. Uh, let me just see really quick. I know I've been opening and closing a lot of things, but we are using uh, 1.2 gigs of RAM, so not the greatest, but I've also enabled the weather and you know these little things. I have Dropbox running and whatnot. Um, another thing that I meant to discuss it in another video, but I don't even know if that's necessary. Um, why I picked PC Man, PC Man FM as a file manager. And this is why. So as you can see, set these the same width, and look at the folder spacing. And like I can 
if I zoom it in to make them bigger, it just does that. Like I can make them like this, but I don't want that. I like seeing my icons. I just like the way PC Man FM spaces my icons. See, I don't know. I could just I see more. I don't know. I've, I've found this is files. I found the same thing. Nemo, Nautilus, uh, Space FM. I've tried uh, Thunar is my second favorite, but it has the same issue with the spacing. I'm sure you could go in and change files and fix it, but you know what? I like it to just work. And I also like with PC Man FM that it has a uh, built-in applications browser, which is kind of neat. So yeah, anyways, that's it. I'm not going to go on uh, too much further, but this is why I like gnome and why you should like it too but really it's up to you um yeah anyways that's it for me see you next time